David and Sharon Smith are tree lovers, so when they moved into their leafy suburban property, they never expected a rogue root would cost them a million dollars, and no insurer is prepared to touch the problem. This is the tree root from hell. It just continues to get worse, so you can do this if you wanted to. David and Sharon Smith have a home among the gum trees, but what lies beneath this one has become a very costly problem. There's nowhere to go with this. We can't sell, we can't move on. This is the neighbour's tree, and this here is the property border. Right there, you have a tree root growing straight into the slab under David and Sharon's house. And right above that root, you have cracks appearing that go all through the wall and get bigger the further they go up. In the room right above, the crack is so big they need a towel to keep the wind and rain out. Wow, that's the... This, these bricks will come totally out. Most, this is actually just continues to get worse. So you can do this if you wanted to. Um, you can see the outer wall there. What started as a hairline crack four years ago has turned into a monster, opening up views they'd rather not see, and right outside the window, is that dreaded tree. The root system is directly under here. The cracking is directly above the root system. It's a pretty big crack. It's a very big crack and it's continuing to grow. And the damage bill keeps growing with it. It's already cost the Smiths $200,000 in legal bills. The repairs will cost another 200 grand and they say it's also knocked 600,000 off the value of their home, all up it's a million dollar tree root. It's crippled us financially. We have no future in retirement. The owners of the tree live in China. The Smiths say they refused mediation, so it went to the Land and Environment Court. The judge ruled the tree isn't to blame for these cracks, so the Smiths tried to claim with GIO Insurance. They sent out their own team of experts who found the damage is being caused by the tree, which they don't cover. The legal systems let us down, the land environment courts let us down, our elected politicians have let us down, the council have let us down, and our insurance company have let us down. No one's been able to help. Nobody wants to help. Geotechnical engineer Andrew Shirley specialises in forensic investigations and has examined the troublesome route. Is there any doubt in your mind that the tree is causing that damage? No, none whatsoever. Tree roots are well known to jack apart rocks and the same thing happens underneath a footing. The tree root goes in, it grows and swells and exerts very large pressures. The Smiths didn't have Andrew Shirley's geotechnical expertise in their court hearing as it seemed like an open and shut case. We've got enough reports, we've got an arborist, a builder, an engineer, all saying it's the tree as well as the visual impact itself. Well, we thought the physical tree might sort of wham there. You know, it's standing there. But Andrew Shirley believes some of the evidence relied upon by the judge was incorrect. We have evidence that the pressures exerted by tree roots of this type would be anything between 20 and 100 times what the arborist said. So you'd think armed with this new evidence, the Smiths could appeal. Well, not in the New South Wales Land and Environment Court, which only allows appeals based on points of law or new technology that wasn't available at the initial hearing. I mean, if I'd murdered someone and then they'd found out I wasn't guilty, I can at least be exonerated. But there's no process for the reverse with a tree. Not fair, is it? And the Smiths say they've run out of money to fight any more legal battles, so they've written to the judge and the Attorney-General for help.